Hello everyone, today I'll be going through all of the challenge questions in LXL's Pure Year 1 textbook, Chapter 8. Okay, our first question is from exercise 8a. Find the constant term in the expansion of x squared minus 1 over 2x cubed. So, if we think about our coefficients of the um, terms in this expansion, we will have 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1 and 1, 3, 3, 1 using Pascal's triangle and this is the row we're looking for. So our first term will be 1 times, if we start with x squared being cubed, then we'll have minus 1 over 2x to the power of 0, which is just 1. So this term will have uh, x to the power of 6 in it, which is not a constant term. Our next term will be 3 times x squared squared times minus 1 over 2x to the power of 1. And the power here will be x cubed, which is also not a constant term. Uh, our next term will be 3 times x squared to the power of 1 times minus 1 over 2x squared. And this will give us a constant with no um, x part. And this is the term we're looking for. So we get 3 times x squared times minus 1 over 2x squared. So that's positive 1 over 4x squared. The x squared will cancel and we get our constant term as 3 over 4 and that is our answer. Okay, for exercise 8b, part a says work out 10 choose 3 and 10 choose 7. Okay, so if we use the NCR formula here, so we have n choose r is equal to n factorial over r factorial n minus r factorial. If we use that here, we get 10 factorial over 3 factorial and 10 minus 3 is 7, so 7 factorial here. And if we put this into our calculator, we'll get 120. Now doing the same for 10 choose 7, we have 10 factorial over 7 factorial times 10 minus 7 factorial, which is 3 factorial. And that's also equals 120. Okay, part B. Work out 14 choose 5 and 14 choose 9. So 14 choose 5 using the same formula. We get 14 factorial over 5 factorial times 9 factorial. And putting that into your calculator, you get 2002. And doing the same for 14 choose 9, we get 14 factorial over 9 factorial times 14 minus 9 factorial, which is 5 factorial. And that also equals 2002. So, part C, what do you notice about your answers to parts A and B? Well, you can see that the two answers for part A are both equal, and the two answers for part B are also both equal. So, we can see using the NCR formula, we get the same numbers, except in the denominator, the two factorials are swapped around, which changes nothing. So, our two answers are the same. And part D says prove that n choose r is equal to n choose n minus r. So n choose r is equal to n choose n minus r. So if we use the formula to work out what n choose n minus r is, we get n factorial over n minus r factorial uh, times n minus n minus r factorial, which is equal to n factorial over n minus r factorial times n minus n minus r, so that's n minus n plus r, so we get just r factorial. And this is equal to n factorial over r factorial, n minus r factorial, swapping, swapping around the um, factorials in the denominator, and that we know is equal to n choose r from the n choose r formula. And so we've shown that n choose n minus r is equal to n choose r as required. Okay, for this question from exercise 8c, part A says show that a plus b to the power of 4 minus a minus b to the power of 4 is equal to 8ab a squared plus b squared. Okay, so if we start by looking at Pascal's triangle, you can see that the row we are looking for is 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. Okay, so expanding out first, a plus b to the power of 4. We get 1 lot of a to the power of 4 times b to the power of 0, plus 4 lots of a cubed times b to the power of 1, plus 6 lots of a squared times b squared, 
plus uh, 4 lots of a to the power 1 times b cubed. And finally, plus 1 lot of a to the power 0 times b to the power 4. Okay, and if we simplify this, we get a to the power 4 plus 4a cubed b plus 6a squared b squared plus 4ab cubed plus b to the power 4. And now if we do the same for a minus b to the power 4, we get 1 lot of a to the power 4 times minus b to the power 0 plus 4 times a cubed times minus b to the power 1 plus 6 times a squared times minus b squared plus 4 times a to the power 1 times minus b to the power 3 and finally plus 1 lot of a to the power 0 times minus b to the power 4. So uh, simplifying this, taking care of the negatives with the minus b, we have 1 lot of a to the power 4 times minus b to the power 0 which is just a to the power 4 plus 4 times a cubed times minus b to the power 1 so we get minus 4 a cubed b. Next we have 6a squared times minus b squared so that's plus 6a squared b squared. Next we have 4 times a times minus b cubed so that's minus 4ab cubed. And finally, 1 times a to the power of 0 times minus b to the power of 4, we get plus b to the power of 4. Okay, now doing a plus b to the power of 4 minus a minus b to the power of 4. And when we do this, we see that the a to the power of 4 will cancel, the 6a squared b squared will cancel, and so will the b to the power of 4 at the end. So we're just left with 4a cubed b minus minus 4a cubed b, so that's 8 a cubed b and 4ab cubed minus minus 4ab cubed so we get plus a a b cubed and factorizing 8ab out we get a squared plus b squared and that is what the question asked for okay moving on to part b given that 82896 equals 17 to the power of 4 minus 5 to the power of 4 Write 82,896 as a product of its prime factors. So if we can get 17 to the power of 4 minus 5 to the power of 4 into the form a plus b to the power of 4 minus a minus b to the power of 4, we'll be able to write it in the form 8ab a squared plus b squared, which would be very helpful in terms of finding its prime factors. So here 17 will be our a plus b and the 5 will be our a minus b. So solving these two equations simultaneously, if we take the second away from the first, we get 12 equals uh, 2b. So we get b equals 6. And solving that back into the top one, we get 17 is equal to a plus 6, and therefore a equals 11. OK. And so we have that 17 to the power of 4 minus 5 to the power of 4 is equal to 8 times a b and times a squared plus b squared so that's 121 plus uh, 36 so that's 157. Now it turns out 157 is prime so our prime factorization will be 2 cubed times 11 times 2 times 3 uh, times 157 or 2 to the power of 4 times 3 times 11 times 157. And that is our final answer. OK, exercise 8D. Find the coefficient of x to the power of 4 in the binomial expansion of a, 3 minus 2x squared to the power of 9, and b, 5 over x plus x squared to the power of 8. So for part a, to get a term with x to the power of 4 in it, you need to have the minus 2x squared squared. And to get that, that means the 3 must be to the power of 9 minus 2, which is 7. And the coefficient is going to be 9 choose 2, which is equal to, using your calculator, uh, 36. So our coefficient of x to the power of 4 will be minus 2 squared times 3 to the power of 7 times 36, which is equal to 314,928. Part B. 
Here to get the power of x to the power of 4, we're going to have to have 5 over x and x squared. And here we can spot that if we raise both of them to the power of 4, we'll get our x to the power of 4 term. And here our n choose i will be 8 choose 4, which is equal to 70. So our coefficient is 5 to the power of 4 times um, 70, which is equal to 43,750. And that is our coefficient of x to the power of 4 for part b. Okay, and finally our mixed exercise 8 questions. Question 1. F of x equals 2 minus px times 3 plus x to the power of 5, where p is a constant. Now, there is no x squared term in the expansion of f of x, so that p equals 4 thirds. Okay, so if we first expand 3 plus x to the power of 5 using Pascal's triangle, if we quickly write out our, uh, our triangle, we get that the coefficients must be 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. So we only really need to go up to x squared because we're looking at the x squared term. So we have 1 times 3 to the power of 5 times x to the power of 0 uh, plus 5 lots of 3 to the power of 4 times x to the power of 1 plus 10 lots of 3 cubed times x squared and so on and so on and so on. But we don't really need to work those out because we're only interested in terms up to x squared. Okay, and simplifying this, we get 3 to the power of 5, which is 243, uh, plus 5 lots of 3 to the power of 4, which is 405 x, and we get plus 270 x squared, plus so on, so on, so on. And now looking at f of x again, which equals uh, 2 minus px times 3 plus x to the power of 5, which we know is 243 plus 405x plus 270x squared plus and so on and so on, so on. Now we know that to get x squared terms, we're going to have to either do the constant term here times 270x squared or minus px times 405x. And that is the only way we can get x squared terms from this expansion. So our coefficient of x squared is going to be 2 times 270 minus 405p and that's equal to 540 minus 405p and we know that because there is no x squared term this is going to be equal to 0 so we have 0x squared and there's no x squared term so we have uh, p equals 540 over 405 which is equal to 4 over 3 as required Okay, and for question 2, find the coefficient of x squared in the expansion of 1 plus 2x to the power of 8 times 2 minus 5x to the power of 7. So first of all, let's look at the expansion of 1 plus 2x to the power of 8. We will have, first of all, just 1 to the power of 8. Then we'll have 8 choose 1, which is 8, lots of 1 to the power of 7 times 2x to the power of 1, and then plus 8 choose 2 which is 28 times uh, 1 to the power of 6 times 2x squared and so on and so on and so on but we're only worried about terms up to x squared so we're trying to find the coefficient of x squared so that will do for now simplifying this we get 1 plus uh, 16x plus 112x squared and then for 2 minus 5x to the power of 7 we have uh, 2 to the power of 7, first of all, and then we'll have 7 lots of uh, 2 to the power of 6 times minus 5x to the power of 1, and then 7 choose 2, which is 21, lots of 2 to the power of 5 times minus 5x squared, and so on, so on, so on, but again, we're only looking for terms up to x squared. Simplifying this, we get 128 minus 2,240x uh, plus 16,800x squared, and so on, so on, so on. Okay, 
Now, multiplying these two together, we have 1 plus 16x plus 112x squared plus so on, so on, so on times 128 minus 2,240x plus uh, 16,800x squared plus so on, so on, so on. And so we'll have three x squared terms here. The first one will be the 1 from the first bracket times the 16,800 in the second. The next will be the 16x from the first bracket times uh, minus 2,240x in the second bracket. And finally, 112x squared times 128. And so our coefficient is equal to 1 times 16,800 plus 16 times minus 2,240 and plus 112 times 128. And this is equal to minus 4,704. And that is our answer. Okay, and that is the end of the challenge question walkthrough for Chapter 8 of Edexcel's Pure Year 1 textbook. Hope you enjoyed this video and see you in the next one.